Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Kodik. So today I'm going to talk to you briefly about the analog trigger and something which often gets asked is how high should be the LH or how low should be the LH. Now, if you see in the previous one of the talks, I'd said that the cutoff seems to be 15 of LH 12 hours post analog trigger, though it's not a fixed because there will be women with a lower LH who will have mature eggs and there'll be women with higher LH who will not have any oocytes at retrieval. But the, these are giving us a general idea into understanding the pituitary response and its relationship to the ovarian response. And that is quite important. Now, I'll put forth two cases, one with a normal LH rise, which gave a good result, and other with an exceptionally high LH rise, and I'll give you my reasoning behind why I did not think that there was premature ovulation. So uh, let's try and uh, share a screen. So one of the things which we will be looking at is we'll be looking at how these two triggers work. So let's look at this case. And that's quite an interesting case. So this is uh, a lady who has an AMH of 12. Uh, she was 36 years old and an AMH not very really high of picamol, but very, very, very good antral follicle count. Now, ne never let that mislead you. The AMH tells us a different story and the AMH is the first hormone to decline as an aging process. The antral follicle counts uh, tend to decline a bit later. And sometimes this can completely confuses us and we end up giving HCG for these cases. So we, we started on, uh, on she uh, was coming in for egg freezing. So we gave her 300 of HMG, no let result, one ml of GNRH trigger. And for a brief period, we had super cure that was, which is Bissell and it was in short supply in Europe. So we gave a decapeptil and we gave one milligram of decapeptil. 20 follicles were seen, 14 eggs were obtained and 12 were mature. So let's have a look at the, uh, see the first thing is that you always check is that the FSH and the FSH is high. The second thing that you, uh, uh, you know, look at is the LH. And if you look at the LH, the LH was 17.8. Three, which again tells us that there's been an adequate LH rise. A progesterone was also in the higher range of 48 and a, a very high estrogen level. So in my opinion, the progesterone holds the key here on maturity. And uh, uh, that is because, again, you have to ask the question, why? Because progesterone increases due to luteinization of granular cells. And so that is the reason why you should have a look at progesterone too, because that will hold a key on seeing whether the trigger has worked. And so if you see here, the trigger has worked essentially well. Now let's come to the second case. And in the second case, let's say patient a 36 year old PCO, AMH of 38 mole, And here we give a 225 of HMG and letrozole. So if you have a look at the E2 levels, E2 levels have been generally low. Again, give a decapeptil one milligram and the post LH was different. So she had a large number of follicles and the FSH had a good rise. Let's look at, at the LH, LH of 117. And in the past people have come to me and said, that LH means ovulation has occurred. And the answer is no, why? One is a, a progesterone that does not match the LH rise. It's high, but it does not match the ovulatory LH uh, rise. And you know, if you are having a premature ovulation, the progesterone moves up higher. But equally, her E2 level also held the key. The E2, the previous day, were 4,600 around, and there's been a marginal drop. So pre-ovulation, estrogen starts mildly dropping. That's what happens in nature. So here, I said, no, this is very likely to be a large number of follicles and also a large number of follicles which have got a better number of mature eggs. But in addition, this is my belief, and it may be wrong, giving letrozole tends to give more androgens inside the follicle. And probably by giving an analog trigger, your luteinization may be better. And also if you look at the other papers when you give letrozole, 
even before the trigger, progesterone levels tend to go a bit higher. So, you know, if you're doing a fresh transfer and you add letters, all your chances of having a higher progesterone day of trigger is higher. But equally, I believe you add letrozole, then your analog trigger also in, gives you a far more aggressive luteinization and a better luteinization. And so here, out of 26 follicles, we got 22 mature eggs, which is completely in line with what is happening. So two cases where in both these cases, the analog trigger has worked. In the first one, you've seen a natural rise of LH, natural rise of progesterone, and a natural rise of FSH. But even though the LH is 17.5, if you have a look at this, the progesterone was 45.1, giving us a clear indication that you're more likely to get eggs. Let's look at the second case, LH of 117, the fear of premature ovulation, which should not, you should not worry about it. A progesterone that is high, but an estrogen that has not dropped dramatically. Now, sometimes the estrogen drops dramatically, and that is where premature ovulation has occurred. So that's in short about understanding the analog trigger. And this is about the higher levels. So that's a brief idea. And hopefully we'll see you again in the next few weeks.